Hey, are you constantly getting crapped on by sweat lords? I'm Jimmy DePickle, and I'm going to be walking through 10 things you must learn to survive in Sea of Thieves. Firstly, let's start off with something you should do at the beginning of every session. Believe me, I know you want to raise that anchor and sail off into the blue horizon to make some gold. But trust me, you're going to change your mind once you realize you have no cannonballs because you shot them all at that skeleton lord. What's up, brother? Yo, why was that actually clean though? You can easily stock up your ship nowadays by buying supply crates from the Merchant Alliance. Or if you're a proud owner of a captain ship, you can purchase supplies straight to your barrels from the shipwright. But beware, they like to stow supplies in the lower barrels of your ship. As an overall rule, try to sort out your barrels. You do not want to grab worms from your food barrel when in an intense fight with another pirate. Next is something every new player has done on the Sea of Thieves, is anchoring their ship when parking. Don't get me wrong, you can 100% use your anchor to park your ship, but just make sure to raise your sails and anchor after that. This allows you to set sail quickly if there's any approaching danger. You do not want to have to raise your anchor with a ship broadsiding. <laughs> what the heck? No, 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 I'm anchored. No. I'm anchored. No. I'm anchored. No. I'm anchored. Yes, one can always improve. Now that we've talked about how to park your ship, let's get you familiar with how to sail it. Fully lowering your sails will give you the fastest possible speed. The more you raise it though, the slower you're going to go. Pretty straightforward, but raising your sails is also used when turning. If you need to make a sharper turn without dropping your anchor, all you have to do is raise your sails while having your wheel rotated whichever way you're trying to go. But there is more to sailing than just raising and lowering your sail. Angling your sail will drastically change the speed of your ship, if angled correctly. Angling your your sail can seem tricky, but it's really straightforward. If you have the wind blowing with you or to any side of you, just angle your sail to catch the wind. But if the wind is blowing at you in any way, you're gonna want to angle your sail completely forward. I get it. Managing a ship yourself can be hard at first, but so can managing your ship with a crewmate. A great way to manage your ship together is through assigning roles. For example, on Sloop, there are two players, so generally one is assigned the helm and one is assigned the cannon. Being a helm consists of directing where the ship is headed, managing proper cannon angles in PvP situations, preventing the mast from being knocked over, and managing repairs down below. While the role of the cannoneer is to deliver constant pressure into the enemy's broadside while also trying to create holes and immobilize them, the cannoneer also helps the helm repair and bail in certain scenarios. This can differ between crews and communication, but I'll touch more on cannons later in the video. Now let's get into some of the most crucial tips with combat. Let's imagine for a minute that you own a huge castle that is filled to the brim with treasure. Your castle is surrounded by a creepy forest full of bloodthirsty double gunning goblins that want to steal all your precious treasure. And the only way that you can get into your castle is by two ladders on both sides of the castle. Now obviously you would stop at nothing to keep these goblins out of your castle. You would pour hot oil on them, hand them grenades, even introduce them to your shotgun named Larry. Now obviously this is an exaggerated way of explaining you and your ship's relationship. But your ship is your fortress. And you must do your very best to keep pirates off your ship. Otherwise, you could get into bad situations very quickly. Say goodbye to the three hours of treasure you just stacked on your ship. The most effective way of denying a border is using what I call the three Bs. Number one, the blunderbuss. The blunderbuss offers a huge amount of knockback, and if you hit them point blank, you can one-tap them. Number two, blunder bombs. You can use blunder bombs by chucking them on the tops of ladders or at the cannon barrels to knock players off the ladder. Most of the time, if you hit a blunder bomb low enough on the ladder, they won't be able to grab the ladder again. This is easily one of the most effective ways to do this, but you do have to have some blunder bombs handy for this. And my personal favorite, number three, better gaming chair. And his name is John C. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, maybe not that last one, but you can use your sword to defend your ship from borders. You just have to be careful because pirates can still easily get past this by blocking with their sword and juking once they make it up the ladder. I'll go more into detail on how to board enemy ships more effectively a little later. Now let's talk more about cannons. First off, different cannon cosmetics can mess with your aim and hinder your screen. Now I'm not saying that you can't get used to using cannons that take up your whole screen, but there is a downside. 
it takes up your whole screen. All jokes aside though, it really comes down to what your personal preference is. So I'm not gonna tell you what Canon to use, you figure out what works best for you. Personally, I use any of the default Canons or the Black Pearl Canons. These are slim, and I just like them a lot. Canon flares also affect your visibility. Some take a longer time to dissipate, and some have a longer spread, making it harder to see the enemy. It's really just personal preference and what you get used to. But now for actually shooting the cannons. Honestly, the biggest thing when shooting cannons is just paying attention to where your cannonball is and then trying to adjust your shot from there while trying to compensate for the waves. After some time, you do get used to where your shots are going, it just takes practice. But if you do feel like your shots are going absolutely everywhere as if you have no control, then check your compass and see which way you're headed. If your compass reads northwest, then that is probably why. Northwest waves are the most aggressive wave direction and intensely rocks your ship in different patterns, stopping you from honing in on your target. If you want the steadiest possible shots for shooting cannons, then you'll need to angle your ship to the east. This will give you the very steadiest possible waves for shooting cannons. Let's talk about how to lead your shots properly. If you or another ship are in a death spiral, then whichever way you're spiraling, then that is the side you'll want to lead your shot. For example, if you and your opponent are spiraling to the left, then you will want to angle your cannon to the left of the enemy ship. But as a newer player, you may be asking yourself, Jimmy, why would two ships stay in a death spiral with each other? Well, believe it or not, there is actually a stronger side to every ship in Sea of Thieves. On the sloop and the brig, the left side is the strongest, and on the galleon, it's the right. Let me give you some examples why. On the left side of the sloop, there are only three possible holes in the first deck, and four possible holes on the left back. While on the right side, there are four possible holes on the first deck, and four on the back. Now you're already probably saying to yourself, ha, huh, one less hole, I'm already sold. But there's actually more. The cannon barrels are also on the left side of the ship, which means you can restock your cannonballs quicker when shooting on the left side. Another big reason people prefer the left side is the way the mast actually falls. On the sloop and the brigantine, the mast falls to the right, meaning the mast won't be in your way when moving around the cannon line, and it won't block your shots. Now let's get back to boarding but this time more specifically how you get on the enemy's ship. Now the craziest way to get on an enemy's ship is by deck shot. Deck shot is when you load yourself into the cannon, shoot yourself out, and land on the deck of your opponent's ship. This is definitely not the most practical way though, due to how hard it can actually be to deck shot. You definitely get some style points though for doing this. But when trying to board on ladders, you have to be aware of how people play. If you realize that they mainly block ladders with the blunderbuss, then you're gonna want a ladder juke by spamming F on ladders, or simply pretending to climb up the ladder and then slide back down. Doing this will hopefully get them to miss their shot, giving you a small window to climb up before they reload. Some pirates also guard ladders with their sword by spamming M1 in front of the ladders. To counter this, you can grab the ladder while blocking and then climb up holding block, which will allow you to block their attacks after climbing up, then dodge to the side. Or you can use a blunderbuss and attempt to let go of the ladder, shoot them, and then quickly grab the ladder again and climb up. This can take some practice though. You also need to be aware of the window next to the ladder. <laughs> people can easily shoot you through this. You can either jump off the ladder and try to shoot them back through the window, or you can hop off the ladder, close the hatch, and grab the ladder again. My final piece of advice to you when boarding is sometimes you shouldn't board. If you have an enemy's ship immobilized and your teammate is delivering constant pressure but they are not allowing you to board, just swim around, shoot them, and throw blunder bombs until you killed them or you feel it's the right time to board. This is called playing water. Just remember, once you do make it on their ship, your goal isn't to just kill them right away. Your goal is actually to distract them from repairs and make them focus on you. Do you hate it when your teammate doesn't communicate with you at all? Well, your ship might actually have better comms than your teammate. If your ship does take damage, there are specific sounds for where your ship is hit. These are called sound cues. I'm gonna show you a few different sounds that your ship can make.
listening to these cues will allow you to know what is going on with your ship pretty much anywhere around your ship. These are super helpful, so over time you'll learn what these are. Finally, my final piece of advice to you is, you never have a guaranteed win. You can be circling a ship and about to send up to Davy Jones when you'll get crack and or skeleton shipped out of nowhere. I guess what I'm saying is everybody plays this game differently and everybody has their strengths and weaknesses. It just takes practice and PvP. Just keep going, keep learning, keep trying to outsmart the enemy. Just keep practicing. If you keep doing this, I truly believe you'll become a legend upon the sea.